So you're thinking about installing solar panels for your home, but you want to know what actually happens between when you sign up and when the solar panels are fully operational. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you about all the steps that make up the solar installation process so you know exactly what to expect when going solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about the solar installation process and what happens from the time that you sign up until your solar panels are fully installed and ready to be energized. Now, I know that one of the biggest points of frustration when I talk to solar homeowners is that the excitement level, the enthusiasm level is very high when they sign up with the salesperson, but then oftentimes they end up in this black hole where they don't know what's happening between then and when the installation crew actually shows up to put the panels on the roof. So I'm, I'm gonna be breaking down the whole process in today's video. Now, once you've got your system sized properly and you sign your contract, you sign off on your design, typically the, the first step is a site survey. Uh, and the purpose of the site survey is to essentially validate everything that was done on a computer-based design during the sales process. Now we actually wanna have a technician come out to the property get on the roof, take measurements, take photographs, inspect the electrical system, and basically make sure that everything that was promised at the time of sale can actually fit on the roof and can actually be installed as intended. That way, if there are any changes needed, you know that right up front, you don't get further into the permitting process incurring more cost. If there's any changes needed, we wanna know that as early in the process as possible. Now, once the site survey is complete, we kick off three parallel processes. The first process here is the engineering and permitting process. Now, typically you'll have a software-based solar proposal or solar design that was presented to you prior to the sale. But once that design is approved, we actually have to turn that into fully detailed engineering plans. When I say fully detailed, I mean down to where each bolt is going to be attached to the roof to make a structural attachment between the solar system and the, the roof's structural support underneath. Uh, it's also gonna include an electrical wiring schematic showing all the major electrical components and how they are wired together, including down to the detail of exact wire size and exact type of uh, circuit breakers that are going to be used. Now, once we have those fully engineered plans, the package is sent to the local AHJ, which is the authority having jurisdiction, your, your local government, city or county government, uh, with a permit application. And essentially we're saying to the local authority, this is what we intend to install, this is how we intend to install it. And then the plan reviewer will basically check everything off to make sure that the, the construction plan is compliant to the local building and electrical codes. So we have to have that permit approval before the installation starts. Now also, we have to do what's called an interconnection application. And this is filed with the local utility. Assuming you're gonna be on a net metering program or some kind of a solar buyback program, the utility company also wants to know that the equipment that you're going to use and the manner in which you're going to install it complies with the relevant electrical codes, as well as with the local utility's own requirements. Some utilities have slightly different requirements than others, particularly on how batteries can be placed or how much solar power can be sold back and at what times. So they wanna make sure that the plan is sound and that whatever you're gonna be doing is compliant with their regulations. And then the third parallel process, if you have a homeowners association or a property owners association, uh, is to do an architectural uh, review. Now, each homeowners association has a slightly different name for it, but basically, if you're gonna be making a modification to the property, uh, if the HOA has to approve that, then we're gonna wanna file that paperwork as well. So all three of these processes should go off in parallel so that once we have the necessary third-party approvals, we can actually send the materials and send the installation crew to the job site. Now, this is a great time to introduce today's video sponsor because one of the biggest complaints that we get, like I said earlier, is that homeowners sign up over here, all of this is happening, and oftentimes nobody is communicating with the homeowner, letting them know what's going on so that they don't think that they've just been left in the dark. And today's video sponsor, Sunvoy, has a solution for this problem. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Sunvoy. If you're a solar installer looking to boost referrals while lowering your fleet maintenance cost, then you need to take a look at Sunvoy. 
Sunvoy is the first solar customer portal built by contractors for contractors. It gives solar installers a white labeled app with their custom branding for homeowners to use from the minute they sign up through the 30 year life of the system. System owners can track their solar project in real time and see all of their energy data from over 30 inverter and battery manufacturers, all from within the app. So if you're ready to elevate your customer experience and maximize referrals, then go directly to the Sunvoy website or click the link in the description below so that you can get signed up right away. I thank you Sunboy for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, once we have all the necessary third-party approvals, the materials are sent to the job site. Now, some contractors will drop ship the materials to the job site, meaning that the, the equipment may arrive before the actual installation crew. If in that case, usually it's only a couple of days and the contractor still has responsibility for guaranteeing the install. So even if they drop the equipment, it's not technically yours yet as a homeowner until everything is completed and the inspector signs off. Now, once the materials are there to the job site, then of course the installation crew will come to the job site shortly thereafter. And we could split up into up to three different teams. So you could have your roof team doing the solar panel mounting on the roof. You could have your electrical team doing the inverter hookup, which is typically at ground level. And then if you're doing battery storage with your solar system, you could have a separate battery team, which could be wired for self-consumption or it could be wired for emergency backup power. And then if you are using the battery for emergency backup power, you could either install a critical loads panel where you're basically only, only backing up the most sensitive circuits in the house, or with the newer battery systems, it could be wired for whole house backup. So that could be a separate team that does the battery installation. Now, once all of the major system components are installed, we call the local AHJ and they send the inspector to do the final inspection. Again, basically they're, they're just checking to make sure that what we sent them with the engineering plans, what we sent them with the original permit application matches what actually physically got installed on the property. Then once the local inspector signs off, then the utility is notified to install your net meter, uh, assuming you're on a solar buyback program or some sort of a net metering program. And then the utility will give you what's called final PTO, which stands for permission to operate. And that's the point at which you can activate your solar system full power be powering the house and if needed, selling power back and forth to the power company. So this has been a brief presentation on the solar installation process. Again, it gets very frustrating at this initial part of the process if you don't have visibility uh, into what's going on. So that's why I wanted to get this information out, uh, particularly for you homeowners to understand what needs to happen prior to the actual physical installation occurring on your home. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your home page and on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner, if you're in the process of looking at different solar power options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote or, or maybe you already have a price quote, you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or getting the best deal. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. You can set up a call with a solar expert uh, or just use our free online quote tool to see how much solar and storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.